What's happening, my curious bunch of health fanatics? A recent study published in the journal eBiomedicine infers that people who don't drink enough fluids may be at higher risk of chronic disease and are shown to die at a younger age. How much younger, you may ask? Well, a 2019 study that deprived mice of staying properly hydrated found that the mice died up to six months earlier, which is about 15 years earlier for humans. So in this latest study, done by the same team that performed the 2019 study, the researchers looked at an ongoing heart health study that started back in the 1980s and encompasses over 15,000 subjects. So what did the researchers look at? Well, they looked at sodium levels in blood samples because this is a good indicator of hydration. If you are healthy, your sodium levels are usually between 135 millimoles and 146 millimoles per liter of blood. So this sodium in the blood, which I will refer to as serum sodium, was measured multiple times over 25 years in these subjects in parallel with other age and healthy biomarkers such as blood sugar levels, blood pressure, immune molecules, etc. Before we continue, let's take a quick look at what sodium is. So for those of you that don't know, table salt is sodium chloride with a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium and chloride. And sodium alone is an alkali metal and is the sixth most abundant element in Earth's crust. So what does this mean for you? Well, in biochemistry, higher levels of something doesn't necessarily mean healthier, and lower levels certainly doesn't mean healthier either. It appears that most vitamins, minerals, and other compounds essential for life, there is a range or a sweet spot that you need to aim for, and these ranges or sweet spots can change with age. So with this study, the scientists found a connection with serum sodium levels that were higher than 142 millimoles per liter and faster biological aging. Wow, but by how much you ask? Subjects in this study with sodium levels higher than 142 millimoles per liter were associated with a 39% increase to develop chronic disease, and this ratio spiked to 50% in those with serum sodium levels above 144 millimoles per liter. Holy moly. So when looking in parallel at their disease risk and higher sodium serum levels, what did they find? I'll quote directly here. The analysis demonstrated that middle age serum sodium in the upper part of normal range 135 to 146 millimoles per liter is able to predict a faster rate of biological aging, end quote. Wow. Other factors observed were that dehydration could cause, and I quote directly here again, pro-inflammatory and pro-coagulation changes within vascular endothelial cells and also DNA damage, protein oxidation and increased energy expenditure from metabolic remodeling towards metabolic water production and cellular senescence, end quote. It's worth noting that poor diet or exercise can also have similar consequences. So hydration is only one risk factor, but this clearly adds to your rate of aging and disease potential. There are three things you won't find in my home, and that's salt, sugar, or ashtrays. Those things are from a bygone era. We know much better now that these things will kill you faster, and those of you that are serious about longevity should rethink about having those things in your homes. So aim to change your behavior on emerging data. It is a growth and an empowering mindset. Some of you may think you need to add salt to your foods for good health. But there was a reason I deviated into geology earlier and mentioned that sodium is the sixth most abundant element in the Earth's crust. And that's because sodium is found everywhere and in pretty much every food throughout the human diet. So you are already getting sodium whether you want to or not. So what are the best ways to lower sodium levels? For a start, stop eating processed foods. They are often packed with sodium even when they say things like low salt or 50% less sodium. There is actually no metric they are being held to. So when you see wording on packaging like 50% less sodium, well, 50% less sodium than what? These are just advertising gimmicks to make you think you are eating healthy foods. So learn to read the nutritional facts on the back of packaged foods, and it won't take you long to learn which loaf of bread or other packaged food to put back on the shelf. Those of you that eat in restaurants should also ask for no salt to be added to your meals. Chefs often have this request and are more than happy to offer you this healthier option. 
and there are many other spices you can use to spice up your foods as opposed to salt. Foods high in potassium, such as avocados or bananas, will lower your serum sodium levels. Alcohol also dehydrates you as well, so make sure to watch your consumption and consider taking electrolytes if you are drinking for a prolonged period, as the potassium in those electrolytes will bring down your serum sodium levels and rehydrate you faster. And keep this potassium sodium feedback loop in mind for when you eat fast food, such as a ton of salty chips, because the potassium in other foods lowers serum sodium levels. So if you eat junk food, make sure your next meal is high in potassium, such as an avocado, banana, spinach, broccoli, broccoli, etc., because the potassium will purge much of that sodium out through the urine. This is biohacking 101. Always chat with your doctor about health data you see online and maybe ask for your sodium levels to be checked once or twice a year. I have mine checked about three or four times a year. Don't forget to grab a copy of my book, The Anti-Aging Toolkit, hit the thumbs up button, fist pump the subscribe button, or face the consequences of your actions. Visit me at www.scienceofaging.life and as always, stay young and stay vibrant.